Hi, I'm Dan Jones. I'm a hypnotherapy trainer with over 20 years of experience. On this course, I'm going to teach you how to do hypnosis in less than an hour. What you'll learn is three structured inductions and three client-centered inductions, including this one. Look at me. Push down on my hand. Mm -hmm. Push harder, harder. Keep pushing harder mm -hmm. and harder. Keep pushing harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing harder and harder. Harder. Keep pushing harder and harder and harder. Keep pushing harder, 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 and sleep. That's it. All the way. That's it. I will also cover some basic ways that you can work therapeutically, whether it's for yourself or for others, and how to deepen hypnosis, what to look for when you're hypnotizing people to make sure that they're responding and they're becoming hypnotized, and how to bring them back out of hypnosis at the end of a session. There are two types of inductions that we're going to cover on this course. There are structured inductions, which are inductions that you can essentially just follow A, B, C, D, E. So they have a clear structure to them. Some structured inductions people might call scripted inductions. So you can get a hypnotherapy script to follow. But what I'm going to teach you here are structured inductions that are so simple you don't need a script to do them. The other type of induction we'll be covering here are client-centered inductions. A client-centered induction focuses on what you see and observe within the client in front of you. So it's a very responsive form of induction. And the difference is that a structured induction may or may not work with somebody. So every individual is a unique individual and the specific structured induction that you select to do may not match how that person likes to be hypnotized or responds to hypnosis. Whereas a client-centered form of hypnosis, a client-centered induction, you are responding to how that individual in front of you likes to go into hypnosis. So you're responding specifically to them, their needs and their way of going into hypnosis. So you're far more successful with it. But it takes a little bit more practice to get confident at doing that kind of induction. So what is hypnosis? Well, because I want to just get on and teach you the hypnosis, I don't want to spend ages telling you about what it is. So we will focus on the two key aspects of hypnosis. The main thing for hypnosis is that it is about focusing and narrowing attention. So something that's very important to remember is that people are always in a trance. Trance is just about focused attention. With hypnosis, your aim is to focus and narrow that attention further. So you do some kind of ritualistic behavior, in this case, a hypnotic induction, and that's to catch that attention and to narrow that attention down. And so the more you narrow it down, the deeper into hypnosis the person goes. The other thing is that you're trying to communicate with the non-conscious part of the person. So you're not trying to communicate with them consciously. So just as an example, if I said to somebody, lift up your right arm, they can just lift up their right arm because they decide to lift up their right arm. So they've made that conscious decision and they've acted on it and they've lifted their arm up. In hypnosis, what you want is responsivity. So you want things to happen automatically. So within hypnosis, I'll say, I wonder which hand is going to lift. And myself and the client will be looking at the hand and will be waiting for a hand to lift. So you're getting responsivity. You're getting a non-conscious response. They're not deciding, ah, he wants me to lift my right arm up, so I'm going to lift my right arm up. What they're doing is they're wondering about their hands and wondering what's going to happen and wondering how one of their hands is going to lift up. They're not actively thinking, oh, he's asked me to lift a hand up, so I'll lift it up. They're watching and waiting and following along and just accepting when it happens, it happens from within them rather than to them. So that's what you're trying to achieve with hypnosis. That hypnosis is a state of responsivity that you develop within a client and it's a state of deep focused attention and not consciously focused attention. 
So, for example, you could have somebody consciously counting one, two, three, four, and that doesn't mean they're in hypnosis. But what you can do is while they're counting, you can talk about something hypnotic. You can talk about how another part of them can begin to respond. And so that's when you would then be doing hypnosis rather than perhaps just counting. So that's what hypnosis is. Focused attention on an unconscious level, a non-conscious level, not on a conscious level, and gaining responsivity. So having a client responding on an unconscious level, not responding consciously just because you asked them to do something. So before we get into the inductions, I just have to cover with you how you know the person in front of you is going into hypnosis. So what you'll be looking for are things like, often people's eyes will do a faster period of blinking. So they might blink normally, they might gaze, glaze over and just stare at you. But just at that point where they're going into hypnosis, normally they do a couple of fast blinks. And I would say that with nearly everyone I've hypnotized, I've seen that as a stage. So any one thing doesn't mean this person is being hypnotized. What you're going to do is look for a cluster of things that's, that make you think, ah, this person is responding. As I've mentioned, responsivity is a huge part of hypnosis. So if you talk about somebody going deeper into hypnosis, you want to know, is this person responding? So you might see, for example, their breathing, and you can watch the breathing by seeing shoulders rise and fall, seeing the chest go in and out, the sides move in and out, so you can recognize and notice how someone's breathing. And if they're responding, then when you talk about going deeper, they might take a longer and deeper breath. As they go deeper and become more absorbed in hypnosis, often blood flow starts happening to the face and the face starts going pinker or redder. As I say, the eyes will often glaze over if their eyes are open and they'll be staring in space. They'll often do this period of quick blinking. The pupils will get larger as they relax. So you'll notice all these things. If their eyes are shut, then you'll notice movement of their eyeballs under their eyelids as rapid eye movement often sets in. So you'll be looking for these kind of signs and the more of them you see, the more confident you can be that this person is in hypnosis. The most important thing though is responsivity. So I indirectly test for responsivity by doing things like saying, and you can head down deeper into this. And because I say head down, if they're responding to the words I'm saying, not consciously, but unconsciously, then their head will nod forward, the head will move down, because that's what I've suggested. So I'll use words like that as a way of indirectly testing whether this person is in a responsive state where they're responding to me and going deeper and deeper into hypnosis. People will often become very still when they're in hypnosis. It doesn't matter if people move, so if someone's uncomfortable they may shift in their seat. If they're a child, so if you hypnotise children, Children will frequently shift about, move about, open their eyes, close their eyes, do all sorts of things and perhaps appear quite alert and awake. But you'll notice the responsivity there. So you'll be able to do some responsivity testing and that you'll see that they're responding to what it is that you're saying and doing. But for adults, largely most adults will become reasonably still and they'll only move if perhaps they're really uncomfortable in their in their seating position or whatever it happens to be. But largely they'll, be, they'll become very, very motionless. So that's the kind of thing that you're looking out for. So firstly, we're going to cover structured inductions. Now, structured inductions are the easiest forms of induction, but they're also less effective largely because of the fact that they're very rigid. So the better at hypnosis you get, the more you'll be variable even with a structured induction. So what I mean by that is that you could just essentially read a structured induction to somebody and mismatch the person that you're talking to. And some people will go into hypnosis and some people won't. Whereas when you get good at it, you'll 
say the structured induction or you'll do the structured induction, but you'll do it based around your observations. So you'll tie in some of the client-centered induction stuff that we'll be covering a little bit later. And you'll be responsive to the client rather than just perhaps looking at a sheet of paper and reading the stages off of a sheet of paper. So it doesn't mean the induction is less effective for the individual it works for. What it means is that if you use, for example, the rapid induction that I'm going to teach you, if you use that with a hundred people, you might get, say, 50 of them responding to it pretty well, and say 25 not responding at all, and 25 responding very, very well. So you'll get some variation. It's, it's often like a bell curve. So you have a chunk of people in the middle who respond pretty well, to some extent or another, you get some at one end who don't really respond at all and some at the other end who respond extremely well and really easily. And that goes for any hypnotic induction so that isn't tailored to that client that you're working with. So that's the downside to a structured induction that it's a very rigid process and so it's less likely to work with any given individual but they're very easy to learn. So that's what we'll cover now. What you want for this induction is to ask a client to put their hand on top of yours, to look at you, so say, look at my eyes. So you're directing their focus of attention and you say, now push down on my hand, push harder and harder, push harder, keep pushing harder and harder, keep pushing, and you get more empathetic, keep pushing harder and harder. And what you're doing is you say that over and over again until you see that they go in their mind. So you see them perhaps gaze over a bit. You see them maybe verbalize something to themselves by their lip movements, or maybe they say it out loud or they shake their head a bit. You watch them go into their mind and they just sort of gaze off as if to say, I can't. And it gets confusing for them. They think, I can't push any harder. You keep saying push harder and harder. I'm already pushing as hard as I can. I can't push any harder. What do you mean push harder? And when they go in their mind and they say that, or they have that moment of confusion, then you pull your hand away. You say, close your eyes, pull your hand away, click your finger and say sleep, all at the same time. So your hand has their hand on it. You say, close your eyes, sleep. And so you just say it all very quickly. Close your eyes, sleep and you swipe your hand away, click your finger at the same time as swiping your hand away, because they're pushing down, suddenly their entire body and all that energy of pushing down suddenly dissipates and shoots down through them, and it feels like they're suddenly going deeper. It feels like they're suddenly going down within themselves, and it triggers the PGO, a PGO spike, which is the reorientation response in the brain. So it triggers that, and when that gets triggered in a person, they just want a clear command or a clear idea of what is the way forward, what am I supposed to do? So although hypnosis isn't sleep, when you click your fingers and you say sleep, they understand that, that in this context, it means go into hypnosis, because that word has been used so much through hypnosis history that people are used to it, they're used to that idea. And so you say sleep and they drop down and they go into hypnosis. And you have to follow it up straight away with, that's right, deeper and deeper, going deeper and deeper, that's right. And then on to whatever it is you're going to do. Because if you just do the induction and then stop and don't say anything, they'll sit there for a little while. Some people will stay in hypnosis, but most people will be slumped for a little while and then they'll think, oh, oh don't know what just happened then, and then they'll come around quite quick. So you have to give them something to keep following, so you keep channeling them further into hypnosis. So what's advisable is, if you're, especially if you're a beginner at this, is before you do the induction, say to the person you're going to hypnotize, right, I'm going to ask you to push down on my hand, and when I say close your eyes and sleep, I want you just, and act it out while you say it, and I want you just to close your eyes and just go comfortably into hypnosis. And so you close your eyes and you slump your head forward. Close your eyes and go comfortably into hypnosis. And then you can repeat the instructions. So I'm gonna put my hand out, ask you to put your hand on mine, 
and just push down on my hand. And then when I say close your eyes and sleep, I want you just to close your eyes and just let yourself drop down into hypnosis. Is that okay? And they'll hopefully say yes, uh, if they're volunteering to do this. And then you'll do that induction. And I'd say that it's very successful. The thing you have to overcome most is your own nerves or your own disbelief that it will work. So you need to have some belief in yourself. You need to just do it and you'll have success. And so here is a demonstration of the induction. Right, look at me. Push down on my hand, mm -hmm. push harder, harder. Keep pushing harder mm -hmm. and harder. Keep pushing harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing harder and harder, harder. Keep pushing harder and harder and harder. Keep pushing harder, 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 harder. And sleep. That's it, all the way. That's it. That's it. And then one, two, three, and open your eyes again. Oh, that was that was. That's my preferred way. Yeah, if I'm going to do it, it's not that's felt like I was going way. rather than going down. I was going sideways mm. into trance. It's really weird. So the second one of the structured inductions is the eyes open, eyes closed induction. This induction is ridiculously easy to do and there, it doesn't take much to remember what it is you have to do. So all you do is you sit with your client and you ask them to get comfortable and then you say, find a spot on the wall or on the ceiling or somewhere over there, find a spot over there that's above eye level. So if there's a light on the ceiling off in the distance maybe you say look up at that light if there's a clock or whatever over on the far wall you say look at that it doesn't matter what they look at all you're doing is just trying to get them to focus their attention on something above eye level and just keep their eyes fixed on that then you say I'm gonna count from three down to one and on the count of one I want you just to close your eyes and just drift inside and drift into hypnosis and then I'm gonna count from one up to three. And on the count of three, I want you to open your eyes and look back at that spot. And then I'm gonna count from three down to one again. And on the count of one, I want you to close your eyes and just go back inside again, back into hypnosis. So you've now explained to them, this is what I'm gonna do. And then you do it. So you say, okay, find a spot over there to look up at. That's right. Now three, so you're saying that's right as a way of acknowledging, yes, you've just done that correctly. Then you say three, two, and you get deeper with your voice each number, one. And you have a longer one, trying to portray relax, that kind of, you've got to make sure that your whole non-verbal behavior is portraying the message that you're going inside now, you're going relaxed now. So three, two, one. That's it, closing your eyes, going inside your mind. And so you just acknowledge they're doing the right thing, closing their eyes, going inside their mind. And then as you see them take perhaps a deep breath out, you might say, that's right, just going deeper and deeper. So you can say words like that between it if you want to just help them to deepen this. And then you say one, two, three, opening your eyes and looking back at that spot. And so you then reverse it with your voice going up as you count from one up to three. So that's it, looking back at that spot, and then they look back at the spot again. And then you pause for a moment while they look at that spot, and then you say three, two, one. That's it, closing your eyes. And what you want to do is just change the speed with which you do this. So you don't go one, two, three, three, two, one. You don't have a fixed speed. You watch and you focus on their eyes and notice when they're waiting for the next number. So three, two, and once you've said two, they're waiting for you to say one so they can close their eyes. So you'll notice their eyes flickering and twitching and wanting to close. And they might even do the fast blinking that I was mentioning as I really want to close my eyes. Where's the one? Where's the one? And they're waiting with anticipation. So their attention is now focused even narrower, which means they're going even more into hypnosis. And they say, one, that's it, closing your eyes. And you just repeat that until when you say one, 
two, three, opening your eyes. When you get to that stage and are saying that in one of your times of saying this, so it could be maybe the third or the fourth time of saying this, you notice that they really struggle to open their eyes and that they sort of pull their whole forehead up and they struggle to get their eyes open and they get their eyes open eventually and they look back at that spot. And you know at that point you can do this one more time because they really didn't want to come back then. So because you bought them back, that means they're so desperate to stay inside their mind that they'll go even deeper this final time. And so then you do it one final time. Three, two, one. Closing your eyes, going back inside deeper and deeper down. That's right, all the way inside. And so you just add a few suggestions for them, just reinforcing, that's right, all the way inside. They're going all that way. And then they'll be deeply and comfortably hypnotized. It doesn't take very long to do it. It's a brilliant way of teaching the individual self-hypnosis because it means that if they want to, they can, you can teach them in such a way that they can learn to do this induction for themselves so that they can hear your voice in their head saying one, two, three, and then their eyes will be open, they'll be wide awake, and they can hear your voice in their head saying three, two, one, and their eyes will want to close and they'll go into hypnosis. So you can teach this as a self-hypnosis induction as well. Uh, find something to look at, maybe the far light up there or something. Mm -hmm. And all I'm going to do is say three, two, one, and then you can close your eyes. And then one, two, three, you can open your eyes and look back at the light. That's it. And three, two, one, closing your eyes. That's it. One, two, three, opening your eyes. That's it. Three, two, one. That's it. All the way. That's it. Deeper and deeper. And one, two, three. Opening your eye. That's it. <laughs> and three, two, one. That's it. All the way. That's it. All the way. Deeper. And deeper. That's it. And then one, two, three. You can open your eyes and come back to the room. Yeah. So the final structured induction is a body scan induction. Now I like to do body scan inductions from the head downwards because for me that implies relaxing. That implies going deeper. You know, when you go deeper you'll, you go down, you think of heading downwards. So some people do body scan induction starting from the feet up but to me, that doesn't feel congruent. That feels like you're heading up, which is up, out, awake. And so I prefer down, deeper. And by doing it downwards, it allows you to use terms like, that's right, now going deeper down to the next part of your body. So it allows you just to use those kind of words that imply going deeper into hypnosis. So with this induction, it takes a bit longer than the previous two inductions, but it can get a very good, comfortable, deep hypnotic trance. And you can take as long as you like with it. So some people like you to do this induction perhaps over a whole 20 minutes or half an hour or even 45 minutes, where they're just really, really gradually working through doing the body scan, working through becoming deeper and deeper absorbed in the hypnosis. Whereas other people are happy for it to be a quick three or five minute body scan induction. So all you do for a body scan induction is you say, just close your eyes. Uh, so you have the client sit comfortably, get them to close their eyes. Now focus on the top of your head and just notice what the top of your head feels like. If they've got hair, notice what your hair feels like on your head. And then allow your attention to drift round to your ears. And notice what your ears feel like. Notice what your forehead feels like. And allow that attention to drift down to the side of your face, to your cheeks, to your nose. And notice what it feels like to be breathing in that air and breathing the air back out again. And as you breathe out, so I always time the moving down with every time you see the client breathe out, then move down 
So not necessarily every time, but on an out breath, move down to the next body part. So they do the breathing and then just notice the jaw and how the jaw can relax. And notice how the muscles around the neck and the back of the head can continue to relax as you allow that focus of attention to go down to your shoulders. And so all you do is you talk your way through the different body parts, so shoulders, then notice the relaxation and what it feels like for your arms, for the upper arms, the lower arms, and the hands and the fingertips, and then the chest and the upper back, and then the stomach and the lower back, and then your buttocks, and then your upper legs, your lower legs, and finally the feet. And I'll sometimes, as a deepener, which we'll cover later, repeat the body scan again, but this time talk about a light, perhaps a healing light, and say, just notice how that healing light comes into your head, begins to soften around your head, and heal and relax your head, and relax through your body, relaxing your jaw, relaxing your face relaxing your neck. So now you just do the same thing but with a light. So what I'm going to do is very quickly guide you through this. So the other two inductions you've watched happen, with this one you can experience what it's like. So if it's safe to do so, and you can pay this your full attention just for a few minutes, I'll do a very quick body scan induction on you. So take a moment to close your eyes, and with your eyes closed just begin to focus on the top of your head. And as you breathe out, just notice how that awareness can move down to your cheeks, to your forehead. Notice how that awareness can move down to your jaw and how that jaw can just relax a little. And then as you breathe out, notice what it feels like to breathe that air out of your nostrils. And as you breathe in, notice what it feels like to breathe in that air. And then as you breathe out, so your attention can move down to your neck. And notice how the muscles around your neck can relax. And so the muscles around your neck, around your eyes, around your face, around your jaw, all relaxed as that relaxation can move down to your shoulders and the shoulders can relax and they can slump a little and as the shoulders relax and slump a little so that relaxation can move down to the upper arms and as that relaxation moves down the upper arms it can continue down into the lower arms and your awareness and that relaxation can continue down to your fingertips. And from your fingertips, that relaxation can cycle round back to your chest and as you breathe out. So the relaxation can spread through your chest, through your upper back, through your shoulder blades, spread down to the lower back, around your abdomen, down the side of your body all the way down to your buttocks, relaxing down your thighs, your upper legs, and that relaxation can continue to spread down, deeper down through your body, down to the lower parts of your legs, all the way down to your feet, that's it. With each out breath, so that relaxation can spread through your body, from the top of your head, all the way down to the tips of your feet. That's it. That's it. And then on the count of three, you can come back to the here and now, feeling refreshed and revitalized. One, two, three, opening your eyes, coming back to the room, feeling refreshed and revitalized. So that was just a quick run through of the body scan induction. So now we're on to the slightly more complex hypnotic inductions. We're doing client-centered hypnotic inductions. 
So a client-centered hypnotic induction, you'll be using some of these skills anyway, once you've learned them, when you're doing the structured inductions. These will add some elegance and some extra skill to how you do the inductions rather than just following a structure in a very rigid kind of way. So a client-centered induction is about paying very close attention to the client in front of you. So you want to remember all those different trance indicators that we've talked about. And you want to be able to look at that client and be able to respond to them as an individual. And you want to be able to respond in a way that says, whatever is going on for you here and now is the correct thing to be going on for you here and now in relation to going into hypnosis. And that's what these inductions do. They focus attention and narrow that focus of attention. And they increase responsivity. And they do all of this by having it so that you're saying what you're doing is correct. And having you and the client potentially just wondering or being curious about how the hypnosis is going to develop for them. So we'll get into these inductions. So an ongoing experience induction is a really, really, really simple induction to do. But people who are new to hypnosis often worry and think, what if I don't know what to say? Because you don't have a script or a clear structure. So what I would say is what you do have in terms of a structure is a goal. You have an outcome that you want to achieve, which, for example, at this point in time is you want this person to go into hypnosis. So have that as your goal. I want this person to go into hypnosis. All you need to do then is say, okay, so everything that goes on in this moment in time is geared towards that individual entering hypnosis. And then you just pay them very close attention and you start talking about their ongoing experience. So you link everything with the presupposition, which means that you're presupposing there's a certain direction or there's a certain outcome. So with the presupposition that what's going on is part of being hypnotized. So for example, you could sit opposite a client and say, as you go into hypnosis, so that's your presupposition, they're going into hypnosis. As you go into hypnosis, you can hear the sound of my voice while I talk to you. That's their ongoing experience. They can hear the sound of your voice. You can hear some sounds of traffic outside, assuming that there's sounds of traffic outside. You can feel what that chair feels like. And you can occasionally find yourself drifting in your mind and perhaps wanting to go inside a little. So you're just saying ongoing experience. You're not making anything up. You're just literally saying what is true for that client but you're putting it all in terms of, and you're doing all this while you go into hypnosis. So you've said as you go into hypnosis. And you'll keep coming back to that bit. So you can continue. And while you listen to the sound of my voice, you can find yourself drifting deeper into hypnosis. And I don't know whether it will be the sound of my voice that helps you to go deeper into hypnosis or whether it will be the way you comfortably sit in that chair. And at any point you can ask them, so I normally don't ask people to close their eyes in this kind of context. It just starts happening and I notice their eyes are starting to close and then I say, and as your eyes begin to close, so I'm just again responding to their ongoing experience. Their eyes are blinking and closing and I respond to that by saying, as they close you can go even deeper. But what you can do if you're uncomfortable with a client just staring is you can just say, and as you close your eyes, you can go deeper and you just suggest it and then they'll close their eyes and that becomes part of their ongoing experience. So all you're doing for the induction is watching that client and just describing what's happening for them, but always in terms of this is part of you being hypnotized and 
it's probably the simplest way of doing hypnosis because there's nothing really for a client to resist. It's fail safe. You can't fail at it because the client is doing these things. So the only way you can fail at it is if you're working with someone who says, I do not want to be hypnotized, and then they actively stand up and walk away. So it's a really simple induction, and here is a demonstration of it. And if you have any questions, you can obviously feel free to ask or share your experiences with me in the questions section. So as you sit there, you're listening to me, mm -hmm. and while you listen to me, you can begin to drift inside your mind. And as you drift inside your mind, you can be aware of certain thoughts or ideas that go across your mind. And as you're aware of those thoughts and ideas, so you can breathe in and comfortably breathe out. And while you drift deeper into hypnosis, the breathing can relax. And as the breathing relaxes, so the eyes can become very still. And as the eyes become very still, so the eyelids can want to shut. And while the eyelids want to shut, you can begin to go somewhere in your mind, somewhere pleasant, somewhere relaxing. That's it, all the way. And then one, two, three, open your eyes and <laughs> come back to the room. Oh, that's quite pl pleasant. So a leisure trance induction is where you ask a client about something that they do that has trance qualities to it. And then you get some information from them and then you feed it back to them as an induction. So you could say to somebody, so if you could go anywhere in your mind, if you could just like drift off and daydream about anything, what would it be? Where would you go in your mind? And they may say, oh, I love sailing. I can imagine myself out on a sailboat. I love the idea of that. And so then you would explore, oh, what's sailing like? And what you want to know is what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel when you're sailing? And you have a bit of a chat using a very soft tone of voice while you talk and question so that you don't distract them because just them answering your questions is hypnotizing them. Because the only way to answer you is for them to go inside the experience in their mind, to re-experience it again, and start to become hypnotized by that experiencing. And so that primes them for already being partially hypnotized before you even say, okay, close your eyes and just imagine yourself back there again. So that's what you do with the induction that you then reach a point where they've given you some content and you think, yeah, I've got enough content to work with. I know what your experience is. I know that I can feed that back to you. And so you then say, okay, take a moment to get comfortable in the chair and just close your eyes and just imagine yourself back there and imagine yourself. And then you just start describing it. Imagine yourself sailing on the sea imagining what it's like to have those that water lapping against the boat, that sloshing sound against the bottom of the boat, and the movement, the rocking and swaying of the boat as you relax and sail out to sea. So you're just feeding back to them what information you gathered from them about that experience beforehand. And because it's their leisure experience, it's their what they do to relax or what they would like to do in their mind, someplace they would like to go in their mind, and you're just feeding it back to them, Again, there's nothing really for them to argue with. You're just feeding back to them something that they've told you is nice for them. And so it's a really, really effective hypnotic induction. The important thing is you don't want to be just talking to them like this. You want to be talking to them softly and gently, as unintrusive as possible. And the beauty of this 
is that you if you can't think of what to say once you've got going a little bit you can just pause for a while and you say and you just enjoy the experience and then just pause for a moment whether it's a minute or two minutes or three minutes and that will just help them to go even deeper into the experience so it's a really really simple induction to do obviously it takes a little bit more practice to master than having a nice clear structure is there anything you like to do in your spare time um i haven't done very much recently in, in fact for quite a while um but i used to employ and employ <laughs> and enjoy playing um computer games occasionally mm -hmm. I used to love playing football I used to love to swim in fact that's something I would like to do a bit more of, actually, mm. swimming. So, close your eyes and just describe to me what it's like to be swimming. What's it like to be in the water? It's lovely to be in the water because it's relaxing. It's warm. It's relaxing and warm in the water. And do you notice the weightlessness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can just float... Mm. And the sounds of relaxing in water. Very echoey. Mm. Just laying on your back. Mm. And the different sounds if your head goes under the water. Mm. It all goes nice and quiet. And the smell of a swimming pool. Mm. The chlorine. Mm. And just have a sense of floating on your back in the water, gazing up at the ceiling. Perhaps you try and float, keeping in line with some of the wooden slats or something in the ceiling, as there often is in a swimming pool. Just drifting along and the sound of each movement in the water. So that slight sloshing or splashing sound as you move your arms or legs in the water. Perhaps the sounds of others doing the same. Maybe the sounds of other voices of people in the pool, or on the side of the pool. And a certain gentleness or calmness, and relaxing in the water. That's it. And being able to feel the air on your skin, especially after your skin has been underwater for a minute, like if your head's been underwater and then it comes up again, you can feel the cool air on your face. And the feelings of the pressure of the water as you stroke your hands or your feet through that water. Then in a moment, I'm going to count from one up to three. And on the count of three, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. One, two, three. Open your eyes and come back to the room. So this induction is one of my favourite inductions. And what this is, is an arm catalepsy induction. So you gently lift up the client's arm almost imperceptibly touching it. So you just rest your fingers very, very, very lightly either side of the hand and just gently encourage the arm up. Then you ask them to look at the back of their hand. Just say, just gaze at the back of your hand. And while they're looking at the back of the hand, you just start tapping on the top, the bottom, the left, the right, in that kind of pattern, top, bottom, left, right, just so that if you push down, you then push up. If you push left, you then push right. So that what happens is because you keep pushing in opposite directions, the arm creates an equilibrium. It doesn't know, obviously your arm, your muscles automatically push against what's being pushed. So when you push down, the arm unconsciously pushes up a little bit against the resistance when you push up the arm pushes down a little bit so what happens is eventually the arm all the muscles 
create an equilibrium, all the muscles go kind of waxy and the arm just hovers there in space. And while you're doing this and while they're staring at the back of their hand, you can say, I don't know whether that hand will start to feel like it's not yours, but look like yours, or look like yours, but not quite feel like it. And I don't know whether, so you just start throwing some comments out there. Again, you're just talking about ongoing experience. I don't know whether that arm, I can feel when I'm touching someone's arm, I can feel it's going waxy and it's feeling really funny to me. And I know that clients will think it's, it's feeling odd and it's starting to look odd because it's kind of really rigid and weird. And so all I'm doing is commenting on that and I'm just being curious about it. So I'm not saying your arm will feel funny or your arm will look odd. I'm just sharing curiosity and letting what happens to the arm happen but I'm just keeping their attention fixed on what's going on with their arm and that's the hypnotic induction keep their attention fixed on what's going on with the arm so I'm not just doing this in silence tapping on their arm and I'll then talk about because I can feel it's going rigid and it's going all waxy I'll then talk about and I don't know if rigidity will set in from the fingers up from the elbow down, maybe from the shoulder downwards, maybe it will radiate out from the palm of the hand, maybe it will be some other sensation. So again, I can feel it's going rigid, but I don't know where the rigidity is starting, how it's spreading. So I just comment on that. And what you're doing is just trying to get a few sentences in there. You don't need lots of sentences, just a few sentences in there that help to direct and focus that attention by the client on the process of what's going on here. Okay, so. I just lift it up, tap it around, and as you look at this hand, I don't know whether the hand will look like yours but not feel like it, or feel like yours but not quite look like it, and whether some kind of waxy or rigid kind of sensation will appear from the fingertips up, or the shoulder down, maybe from the palm spreading outwards, maybe even just somewhere around here in the fleshy part of your arm just becoming waxy and spreading around. And as that happens, so you can begin to drift inside and it can feel really unusual, perhaps. An odd sensation, that's it. Going all the way comfortably inside. And in a moment, this hand will begin to lower down as you drift deeper and more comfortably inside. That's it. Going all the way. That's it. And then one, two, three, and opening your eyes. So once you've hypnotized the person, you need to capitalize on that and start to deepen the hypnosis. So if you, for example, just do the push down on my hand induction and you click your fingers, you say sleep, and then they zonk out, they will be hypnotized. But if you do nothing else, some people will nearly straight away jump up with their eyes open because they'll notice something's just happened to them and think, oh, what just happened? Some people might respond by staying in hypnosis. But what you want is to have a greater chance of guaranteeing that they stay in hypnosis. So you use a deepener. And there are five different ways that I'll teach you here for deepening. One is to narrow that focus of attention. So I've already spoken about this in relation to doing hypnosis anyway, that hypnosis is about focusing attention and narrowing that focus of attention. So what you can do is you can continue to narrow that focus of attention. You can, for example, if you've done the push down on my hand induction, you can then have them narrowing that focus of attention on maybe saying to them to imagine something so and now you can imagine yourself walking along a beach and so you narrow their attention onto that you can also do a journey so once they're hypnotized you can then have them walking along a beach you can then have them walking through the woods you can have them walking down a country path say down their back garden or something you can have them climbing up a mountain, it doesn't matter what the journey is, but having a journey or having movement deepens hypnosis. Transitions deepen hypnosis. So what you can do is 
once they're hypnotized, you can transition into something else. So for example, it could be that they imagine themselves in an art gallery and then they step into a painting. So they've made a transition and that then deepens hypnosis. It could be that once they're hypnotized, they're, they imagine lying on a beach. So there's some transition already from the hypnosis into lying on a beach. But then in, on the beach, you, you have them imagining drifting off daydreaming while they gaze up at the night sky and then start imagining what it would be like to be on a planet in space looking back at the Earth. So again, you've then transitioned to somewhere else. It could be walking through a gate, walking through a door. Any transition deepens hypnosis. You can give suggestion. So one of the main suggestions I end up giving is deeper and deeper. So once you've done, say, a push down on my hand induction, I might say, that's right, going deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, relax. That's right, going deeper and deeper inside. And finally, you can use silence. Now, silence is incredibly powerful for deepening hypnosis, but only when it's used right and at the right time. If, for example, you do the push down on my hand induction and then you pull your hand away and you say sleep and then you go silent, for many people that doesn't deepen the hypnosis because they're in a state where they want to make sense of what's going on. They've gone into hypnosis because of the word sleep and because of the shock and all those bits, but they need more to latch on to. So for most people, they'll then bring themselves round. So you wouldn't use silence straight away. You would do some other kind of deepener and then use silence a little bit later. So you can use those five different things and you can mix them all together as a way of deepening the hypnosis once you've got it. So you'll probably find that you get hypnosis really quickly and really simply, but the bit to master is once you've got the hypnosis, how do you keep hold of it while it's still fresh? So while there's still a chance that they might think, oh, this is a bit weird, this experience is odd, I, I want to come back to the room because I don't really know what's going on here. You want to keep their mind happy and keep them moving forward deeper into it in a way that's really comfortable for them. I just wanted to share some basic change work techniques because it's all very well being able to hypnotize people or hypnotize yourself. But what you want is to know what to do next. Once you've hypnotized the person, what's the point in hypnotizing them if you don't know what to do with it? So I would never recommend working with anyone who you're not trained to work with. You shouldn't do hypnosis and try and do therapy on people who you're not trained to do therapy on. But I know since being a teenager when I first started learning hypnosis, I was making self-hypnosis tracks for myself to help me improve my pool playing and I was doing hypnosis with relatives like uh, with one of my brothers to help him stop wetting the bed and with another brother to help him improve his pool playing and with people to help them increase their confidence and so I was doing these sort of things as a teenager and so I know that there's obviously a, a tendency that you're going to want to do something with it. You're going to want to be learning this for some purpose beyond just hypnotizing people. So a lot of hypnosis and self-hypnosis books use a lot of suggestion. So you hypnotize the person and then you start saying to them, you'll no longer want to smoke. You're going to be confident and happy. You're going to find life exciting or whatever it is that you decide to give as suggestions. There's nothing magical about the hypnotic suggestions. So for example, if I wanted to help someone to play better pool using suggestion, I would just suggest, and when you go to play pool, you'll find that you are confident, you're focused, and you can play to the best of your ability. And so I would just give those kind of suggestions. But suggestion isn't as effective as creating a real experience in the person's mind. So how suggestion works is it works post-hypnotically. So I would say when you go and play pool, you're going to find yourself calm and confident and you're going to play to the best of your ability. And I can suggest that in hypnosis because I said when you play pool, 
that means the post-hypnotic part is outside of hypnosis you go and play pool and this suggestion about playing really well or you know to the best of your ability will be activated by the fact that you're playing pool so it's a post-hypnotic suggestion i prefer post-hypnotic mental rehearsal so you find out before you hypnotize someone what is it you want and what does that look like what does it sound like what does it feel like to have that what do you say to yourself when you've got that so you have a whole picture built up a whole reality built up and so they tell you this information and then what you do is you hypnotize the person and i like log cabins for some reason so you hypnotize the person and if you're doing it my way you would then do some kind of deepening where maybe they they end up walking in the woods and in the woods you have them discover this log cabin and in the log cabin is a tv screen and they sit down in the world's most comfortable chair in front of that tv screen they look up at the tv screen and they watch themselves in a future situation doing whatever it is exactly as it needs to play out and what you want is to have it so this happens not just in one location in the future but in multiple locations and you then just get them to mentally rehearse that watching it first so it's dissociated they watch it take place first mentally rehearsing the future so you say just see a future situation on that screen playing out with you as a non-smoker and notice how well that goes and they play it out perfectly and correctly and then you say now go back to the beginning step into it this time and experience what it's like so once you've hypnotized someone you've then moved on and done some therapeutic work with that person you want to bring them back out of hypnosis you can either say in a moment I'm going to count from one to three and on the count of three you can open your eyes come back to the room feel fully alert and refreshed and revitalized and then you count one two three opening your eyes come, and you get really lively and animated opening your eyes coming back to the room that's right all the way back and so you do that I prefer to let someone come back in their own time rather than me telling them to come back and I like to make it contingent on them completing inner work so I'll say and when you've done all that inner work you need to do here and now today you can take as long as you need to finish that and then come back in the next minute or two. So what I've done is a sneaky suggestion where I say you can take as long as you want to do that, but come back in a minute or two. So their hypnotic time, they might imagine is an hour, 10 hours, a lifetime or 30 seconds. But real world time, they'll open their eyes within two minutes because that's what I've said. So sometimes I don't say that, I don't feel a need to say that, I'll just say, and you can complete that work in your mind, and once you've done all that work, then the eyes can just open, you can drift back to the here and now. And then I just sit and wait. But if they don't open their eyes after, say, two, three, four minutes, five minutes perhaps, or if I'm short of time, then I would give the suggestion about, you can take as long as you need to open your eyes in the next two minutes, and I'll give a suggestion around that. So thank you for taking the time to complete this course. And what you've covered here is in 60 minutes, how to do hypnosis, what hypnosis is, six different inductions that you can now go away and do and practice and begin to master. Some basics of being able to do something therapeutic with that hypnotic trance that you can get, how to deepen the trance and what different signs to look for that let you know, yes, this person's responding to me and yes, this person is going into hypnosis.